So this question looks like it's going to be a translate word problem question. Again, one of the tricks here that I like to teach is to have a sense of how you're going to approach a question before you even start to read it. So I love that a lot of the strategies that I teach teach you how to do that. And this is an example of that where translate word problem questions tend to be four or more lines long. And we can tell pretty immediately that this is a longer question than four lines. And so the strategy then immediately is, hey, I don't want to read this entire thing. Um, I know that the wording can sometimes be tricky. What instead I'd want to do is read it one sentence at a time, making sure to stop and write down any quantitative information um, so that I don't have to revisit and reread the past or reread the question. I can just revisit my notes and my translation. So the question says a wallet containing $5 bills, seven ten. Five five dollar bills, seven ten dollar bills, and eight twenty dollar bills is found and returned to its owner. So we have a lot of quantitative information there. I want to just say wallet. So you know this is going to represent inside the wallet. So I have five five dollar bills, I have seven ten dollar bills, and I have eight twenty dollar bills. And just because it's probably going to be useful for me to know, I'm going to say that that means that I have twenty five dollars here, seventy dollars worth of ten dollar bills, and one hundred and sixty dollars worth of twenty dollar bills. Therefore, all together I have let's see, five plus zero plus zero is five, two plus seven is nine, plus six is seventeen. I'm sorry, nine plus six is fifteen. Carry the one, one plus one is two. So I have two hundred and $55 in this wallet. Now I move on to the next sentence, right? That's kind of the trick of using the strategy. So I extracted all of the information I could. It's represented here visually. I can go back and look at this and understand where it came from and never have to reread that first sentence. All right, and this is, I'm sorry, this is return to owner, to owner, that might be important. So the next sentence says the wallet's owner will reward the finder with one bill drawn randomly from the wallet. Okay. What is the probability that the bill drawn will be a $20 bill? Okay. So probability is a keyword. Anytime you see it used on this test, probability on this test will always lead to a fraction where the numerator is what you want. And the denominator is the total that you are choosing from, right? Total number of things that you're choosing from. So what is it that we want? The number of things that we want. We want to pull out randomly a $20 bill. Well, how many $20 bills do we have? We have eight $20 bills, right? So for what we want, there are eight of those. There are eight $20 bills. And now what's the total number of things we're choosing from? Well, I hadn't added all this together earlier, but in this wallet, there are a total, right, of 8 plus 7, which is 15, plus 5, which is 20. There are a total of 20 bills. So the total number of bills I'm choosing from is 20. So there's my probability. Now, 8 divided by 20 can be reduced. So I can reduce this by 4. So 4, I can divide by 4, basically top and bottom. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And therefore, the probability of choosing a $20 bill is two-fifths, and the answer is choice D.